Hello everyone, this is the fourth lecture in real analysis uh, and in this lecture we are going to discuss the epsilon criterion for supremum and infimum. So we are going to state the epsilon criterion. There are actually two parts to it. Uh, one, is for, one criterion is for supremum and another criterion is for infimum. And we are going to discuss some examples. So before we proceed further, let us recall uh, something that we discussed in uh, the previous lecture, uh, it, which is actually linked down below, just in case you wanted to check it out. It is linked in the description to this video. So let us recall what is the supremum of the set uh, of a set and what is an infimum of a set. Uh, so let A be a set bounded from above and let alpha be a, re a real number. The number alpha is the supremum of the set A if the two conditions hold. First of all, alpha is an upper bound of A, that is, for every x in A, x is less than or equal to alpha, and the second condition is that alpha is the smallest upper bound of the set A, that is, if C is an upper bound of A, then C is greater than or equal to alpha. So alpha is the smallest upper bound of A. Let us also recall what is an infimum of a set. So let A be a set bounded from below and let beta be a real number. Beta is an infimum of the set A if, first of all, beta is a lower bound for the set A, that is, for every x in A, x is greater than or equal to beta. And the second condition is that beta is the largest lower bound for A. That is, if we take B a real number and if it is a lower bound for the set A, then B is less than or equal to beta. Okay, so uh, we refreshed our memory uh, about what is a supremum and what is an infimum. So now we are ready to formulate the epsilon criterion for supremum and the epsilon criterion for infimum. So let us state the epsilon criterion for supremum. So just like in the definition of the supremum, let A be a set bounded from above and let alpha be a real number. So we have that alpha is supremum of A if and only if, so this uh, abbreviation stands for if and only if, uh, for every x in A, x is less than or equal to alpha. Does it remind you of anything? Uh, that's the, actually the same as the first condition in the definition of supremum. So it, this didn't change. So this just means that alpha is an upper bound of the set A. And the second condition is that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an element x in A such that x is larger than alpha minus epsilon. So let's just try to understand this. So suppose we have a very simple case where A is just an interval. Okay, so we just have A is our interval. And so alpha is here. Uh, and alpha is the supremum of the set A. So that means that, first of all, alpha is an upper bound of the set A. So this point is to the right of the set A. But second condition is that if we look at the point alpha minus epsilon, which is to the left of alpha, since alpha is the smallest upper bound of the set A, then alpha minus epsilon is no longer an upper bound of the set A. So alpha minus epsilon is not an upper bound of the set A. So, but that means that there is something in A, there is an element x in A, such that x is larger than alpha minus epsilon, right? But for alpha minus epsilon to not be the an upper bound of the set A, we, we should have some, some element uh, of the set A that is larger than alpha minus epsilon. Let us now discuss the epsilon criterion for infimum. So let A be a set bounded from below, just like in the definition of infimum, and let beta be a real number. We have that beta is infimum of A if, first of all, 
for every x in A, x is greater than or equal to beta. So this just means that beta is a lower bound for the set A. And this is the same as the first condition in the, in the definition of infimum. And the second condition is that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an element x in A such that x is less than beta plus epsilon. So again, let us look at the situation where A is an interval. So we have a real line here. We have a set A that is just an interval. And we have a number beta here. So beta is the infimum of the set A because uh, the point beta is to the left of the set A and also beta is the largest lower bound of the set A. So that means that if we look at the number beta plus epsilon, it's no longer a lower bound of the set A. So beta plus epsilon is not a lower bound for the set A. But that means that there, there has to be an element x in A such that x is less than beta plus epsilon. So let us consider the following example. So let E be a set that consists of all quotients n plus 1 over n, where n is a natural number. We want to prove that the infimum of this set is equal to 1. So let's just try to look at this set E. Uh, so if n is equal to 1, then we are going to get an element 2 over 1. Is If n is equal to 2, we, we are going to get the element 3 over 2. If n is equal to, to th 3, we are going to get an element 4 over 3. Uh, and then 5 fourth, 6 fifth, and so on. So this is just for us to have a sense of uh, what kind of elements are in the set E. And it you may notice that this uh, sequence, 3 halves, 4 thirds, 5 fourths, 6 fifths, that it decreases uh, and it's not difficult to imagine that uh, the infimum of the set E is actually going to be the number one. So even if, if we didn't know that the infimum was the number one, we could have guessed from looking at the set E. All right. So uh, we need to prove uh, two things. We are going to use the epsilon criterion of infimum. So we need to prove first that um, one is a lower bound for E. So that is for every x in E, x is greater than or equal to one. And we want to show that for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists an x in E such that x is smaller than one plus epsilon. Okay, so this is by the epsilon criterion of infimum. This is what we are aiming at, okay? So um, note, for every x in E, x is actually equal to n plus 1 over n for some natural number n. So instead of proving that this statement is true for every x in E, what we can prove is that for every n natural number, n plus 1 over n is greater than or equal to 1. And then instead of proving this, we can prove that there exists n natural number such that n plus 1 over n is less than 1 plus epsilon. Okay, so all of this was scratch. So I'm going to box it. So this was scratch. Uh, now, let us proceed with the actual proof. 
So let n be a natural number. So let's just aim at proving the condition 1. So let n be a natural number. This is the condition 1 right here. Uh, then n plus 1 over n. Well, we have a quotient here where numerator is larger than the denominator. So it it obviously is greater than or equal to 1. So that means that 1 is a lower bound for, for the set E. Okay, now we need to prove condition 2 for every epsilon greater than 0. So let us fix epsilon greater than 0. What we want to show is that there exists n natural number such that n plus 1 over n is less than 1 plus epsilon. Okay, so for every n natural number, let us work with this inequality. Let us see if we can rewrite it. n plus 1 over n is less than 1 plus epsilon, and this is true if and only if so here we can uh, divide by n term by term. So we are going to have 1 plus 1 over n is less than 1 plus epsilon. This is true if and only if 1 over n is less than epsilon. This is true if and only if n epsilon is greater than 1. So now we can recall the Archimedean pro property. So by the Archimedean property, which we stated in the previous video, there exists a natural number n such that n epsilon is larger than 1. But then, uh, if we start here, uh, this um, chain of inequalities, uh, this chain of inequalities, we can go backward in this chain because these inequalities are true if and only if. Uh, so we can move in this direction. So this in inequality n epsilon greater than 1 implies the in inequality 1 over n is less than epsilon, which implies the inequality 1 plus 1 over n is less than 1 plus epsilon, which implies the inequality n plus 1 over n is less than 1 plus epsilon. But this is what we wanted to show. Right? This is what we are aiming at, and we showed it. So uh, we showed that the infimum of the set E is equal to 1. So QED. Our second example is about a set A that contains its maximal element, alpha. We want to prove that this maximum element actually is going to be the supremum of A. So just to illustrate this situation, let us suppose that we have a set A and it does contain this point over here. So alpha is in A. Uh, so we want to show that alpha is actually the supremum of A. So again, we are going to use the epsilon criterion of supremum. So we want to show first, the first condition is that for every x in, in A, x is less than or equal to alpha and the second condition is that for every epsilon greater than zero there exists an x in a such that x is larger than alpha minus epsilon so this is by the epsilon definition of supremum and by the way uh, just in case uh, it seems like difficult to remember you can always draw a picture for yourself so if you have a set A and alpha is the supremum of the set A, if you look at alpha minus epsilon, there will always be some element x in A that is larger than alpha minus epsilon. So you can always remember this picture uh, and that way you can always recover the second condition in the epsilon criterion for supremum. Condition one, it's true because simply because alpha is the maximal element of A. So to be a maximal element of A, it means that alpha is larger than or equal to any element x in A. So condition one is true 
because alpha is the maximum of the set A. So there is nothing to prove here. Uh, now let us fix epsilon greater than zero. Uh, then for the, the element x, which is equal to alpha in A, alpha is greater than alpha minus epsilon. So this very number alpha in A, it is the, the x that we are looking for. So it, it, alpha is greater than alpha minus epsilon. Agree, if epsilon is larger than this inequality is true. So this is all. We proved, uh, so hence, condition two is true. And we proved our statement in example two, QED. So this is all for this video. Hopefully it uh, helped you to understand more about Suprema and Infima. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Please put a like underneath it. Uh, subscri subscribe to this channel and uh, see you in subsequent videos and be good at math.